Now, this whole idea about banning uh, ex-gay therapy is now in the public subconscious, I guess you might say. A lot of people are saying, is this really a good idea? Well, here's the thing. When we talk about ex-gay therapy and banning it, we're not talking about just an outright ban. We are talking about a ban of this type of therapy, if you want to call it a therapy, it's not, for the use on minors, people under the age of 18. And now California has done that, and an activist judge, if you want to say that, an activist judge, federal judge came out and said, no, I'm going to hear the, hear the case, we're going to try it, and we're going to see if this is a constitutional, a constitutional um, breach against the First Amendment. Now, if that's the case, um, then if they win, they really lose. Let me just say this. It, it's a really interesting take. We are talking about changing the sexual orientation of children, minors, under the age of 18. If this judge says that people, adults, we're talking about adults who are not, who are not the parents, by the way. They're saying that this is the right of children. No, it's the right of the parents to push their, these kids and other adults, we're talking about ministers and so-called uh, therapists, they're the ones who are suing. We're talking about um, adults imposing their worldview and their sexuality on these kids. Now, you right-wingers, and who is it that's filing this lawsuit? Is it Alliance Defending Fascism? I'm sorry, Freedom? <laughs> Well, one of these reactionaries are really stupid, to be honest with you. They don't even understand that they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. Possibility of uh, the ramifications of a ruling in their favor is going to backfire on them directly because what they want to do is make this judge create a constitutional right to change the sexual orientation of a child. I'm sorry, but aren't you conservatives, you reactionaries, against that? Yeah, you are against that. So why do you want it? Why do you want to make it a constitutional right? Be very careful what you ask for. I mean, that's what your own general, Mark Levin, says. Groucho Marx, you know that guy? Mark Levin, who chases ambulances for a living? Listen to me, I ain't know what you're gonna make. He says to be careful. Be careful what you wish for at the courts. Take his advice. Are you sure you want this? Now, for the gay people who say, oh my God, I hope we win. Doesn't matter if we win or lose. Doesn't matter. It's a win win for us. That's my view. If they win, the reactionaries, then guess what? Gay people have a constitutional right to recruit. <laughs> right? I'm going to say this. It's going to sound kind of weird and goofy and maybe even wrong. But that's what they're doing. These reactionaries are so stupid, they don't even realize their own. Their own stupidity, their own idiocy. Gay adults or gay activists, homosexual activists, will now have a constitutional right to go and recruit minors into the gay lifestyle to make them gay. Because if you have a constitutional right to change the sexual orientation of a minor, then, <laughs> then I guess we can put together a little group of people who want to turn a 
a gay teenager, I mean, a straight teenager gay. Maybe, you know, do some experimentation, some vicarious things, a blowjob here and there, you know. Who, who knows? Right? <laughs> uh, now, imagine if we did that. Imagine if it was the reverse. I mean, these perverts, because that's what they are, these reactionaries, they think that we go out and we recruit teenagers into the gay lifestyle. That's what they think. That's in their imagination. But it's not reality. We don't do that. You cannot recruit somebody. That comes from within. Your feelings, your sexual attractions, that's that's already inside of you. It's, it's innate. But um, they're saying that, no, it's not. We can change it. So if we can change it, that means, and you want to make that a right... You want a court to declare that a constitutional right, then that means it's a constitutional right for everybody else. I'm sounding like Mark Levin now. <laughs> I'm sounding like Rush Limbaugh. They don't even take heed to their own advice. You know, they tell us, oh, you gay people, why do you always go to the courts? You're going to upset the whole system. Well, what about you? I mean, you're doing the same thing, if not worse, because you're doing something that I think is going to backfire. Now, hopefully the judge won't go there and would rule wisely and interpret the law that was passed correctly. This has nothing to do with religion, but everything to do with mental health. The state of California, just like all the other states, regulate the practice of mental health. There are certain things or rules, regulations, and ethics that psychiatrists and therapists who are licensed to do their business in the state, certain things that they have to abide by. That's common law, common law and knowledge. The first time ever in which people are now questioning the regulation of medical and mental health practice. And so that puts everything else up on the chopping block as well. Because if you say I have a right, a constitutional right to a certain medical and mental health procedure then I guess you have a constitutional right to euthanasia we can make that argument based on what happens with this ruling you can say look if per persons have a right to go to a to a doctor and get their sexual orientation changed and that's a constitutional right and they can do whatever they want to their bodies, then I think there's a constitutional right to euthanize myself, to kill myself with doctor's assistance. Go to the doctor and get euthanized. <laughs> uh, you reactionaries, I thought you were all against euthanization. I mean, so, well, most of you, right? Especially the Catholic Church, you know, they're very much against euthanasia, but here we go. We are treading the waters of this field. Now, my beef in all of this is not just the fact that people are using quack science, pseudoscience to back up their stupid beliefs. My beef in all of this is that the techniques and the, want to call them therapies that they use on these patients, if you want to call them patients, uh, I call them victims of their own stupidity and of their parents and family's stupidity and na um, naiveness. Now, my beef is this. I have looked into this ex-gay therapy. You know, uh, looked into Richard Cohen, Dick Cohen. He's a guy that holds you in his arms to make you straight he's the one that invented that thing where you when you hit and you hit a pillow with a racket or something like that with a paddle to um, 
I don't know, what does that do? Uh, you let go of your aggressions that you have about your mother. And then uh, you sit on his lap and then he holds you and that makes you, oh, that makes you love pussy. Um, <laughs> and, oh, and then he gets to show you magnets, you know. This is how magnets work. We're not talking about magnets, you moron. We're talking about psychology and human beings. Human beings are not magnets. You get that? Oh, by the way, scientists have discovered that there, there is a possibility in certain places in the universe where certain types of magnetism can attract each other even if they're both positive and they're both negative. Oh, no, no, but that's that can happen. Only positive goes with negative. And that proves my theory that heterosexuality is the only thing that can exist. Oh, whoa. Give this guy a Nobel Peace Prize. But that's not really the beef. My beef is the other shit that they do. You have to know why a lot of people, it wasn't just gay people, but straight people, everybody was complaining about these pervs. I call them pervs. They're all perverted. Their tactics not only involve sitting on some guy's lap. They involve undressing, getting the patient naked, having the patient look in the mirror while naked, and masturbating himself. That's a technique. That's a therapeutic technique that they use to make you straight. And then you get to either the patient will write something down or express themselves about their body and about their penis. And here's another technique. Every so often, this group of guys, part of the XK therapy, would go on a camping trip. And I'm not talking about the Boy Scouts here on a retreat just men no women i mean they're not you know there are no strippers there to get you all hyped up all worked up for pussy you know no 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 all just guys it's a big old sausage fest <laughs> and this is how they're going to turn you straight right so you go to this retreat this camp or whatever it is and i guess you do some hiking but the yeah, hiking, you know, you walk it off. You know? <laughs> That's what my dad always used to say whenever I had pain. Walk it off, walk it off, walk it off. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Oh, you're gay? <laughs> walk it off. <laughs> That's my prescription. You have cancer? Walk it off. AIDS? Walk it off. <laughs> uh, but uh, at this retreat, they make you grab another man's cock. I'm not kidding you. Google this. Ex-gay camp grab erect cock or erect penis. One of their therapeutic techniques is to have patients grab the erected penises of other men in order to feel the masculinity and to appreciate it for what it is rather than make it sexual. It does, what is this? It's fucking sick. That's what it is. It's not, uh, look, it's not sick to grab a guy's cock. What is sick is to pretend that this is an ex-gay thing and to charge you money and to pretend, make it like a fantasy. It's like a sexual fetish, a fantasy of, yes, we're going to be straight. We're, we're, we are uh, putting this gay thing down. And then they grab each other's cocks, you know, and uh, uh, you undress in front of, a, of another man. He examines you and then you masturbate in front of them. You masturbate in front of the therapist. And that makes you straight. Okay. 
So the reason why I think the law that California passed was perfect, at least, is because minors should not be subjected to this kind of techniques. Are you okay with a 14-year-old boy going into an office of a, of a quote, therapist? He's not even licensed, probably. And this, quote, therapist tells that 14-year-old boy who is all confused about his sexuality to undress and masturbate in front of him? Isn't that a little bit creepy? Or how about asking a 14-year-old boy to grab a grown man's penis that is erect? Ooh, that makes him straight, doesn't it? You see why we have to ban this, this shit, this quackery? It can lead to abuse. In fact, it has already. We got this news article. Let me try to find it for you. Uh, it's somewhere here, but I always forget to pull them up. And here we go. There is this guy in Southern Africa, South Africa, that raped all of his male patients and he got arrested. And I'm telling you, man, these people are fucking twisted. What's the best way you can imagine for a pederast or a pedophile? I mean, not really a pedophile, but let's say a pederast. Somebody that it wants to secretly have sex with young uh, teenage boys. What do you think is the best way to get the trust of the parents? And when you have a um, boy who is confused of his sexuality or he's not sure if he's gay or straight or whatever, bisexual. Um, you want that boy if you're one of those predators, those chicken hawks that prey on... on on um, gullible, vulnerable little boys. You will want them. And you want the trust of the parents to leave you alone with that child for an hour or two, depending on the session. Not only do you get to grab some 16, 14 year old cock, but uh, you get to um, you know see him undress, that will turn you on, you get to jerk off, you get all this, and then you get paid for it as well. <laughs> How much are these uh, XK therapies? I think Love One Out was what? $1,500 for a week? $1,500, man, that is an industry. That's a job creator right there. <laughs> um, I'm just telling you that the, this whole XK thing is creepy, especially when you invite children into this and then all these uh, XK therapists are raping their patients. You want to expose minors to that? And don't give me this bullshit about freedom. You know, somebody on the Twitter uh, told me, Jose, why do you support this ban? It, uh, you know, it's great that the court struck it down because it's about freedom and small government. I'm like, the hell are you talking about? There's certain things that minors are not allowed to do. They're not allowed to have sex. And in California, age of consent is 18, you moron. Oh, I guess we have to, you know, take away the age of consent because that's big government. <laughs> you get this logic? And then yet they, uh, they ally themselves with conservatives who are like, you gay people want to lower the age of consent. You want to have sex with kids. But yet they're the ones who are saying we need, we need small or no government, which means no oversight, which means that children will be vulnerable to rape. They want... Small government. I mean, we already have small government. That's what we have in America right now. But then you're complaining about this whole thing. And it's big government. And so I'm questioning is, 
if we arrest pedophiles, is that big government? Because we make laws to protect the vulnerable, which are minors and children and, and women and the elderly and the mentally disabled. We have those type of laws. We even have hate crime laws, whether you agree with that or not. The intention is there. Government has to protect the vulnerable. It's part of, of our civilization that all of you conservatives uh, so much want to protect. But I guess, I don't know. Does that mean that if a parent wants to uh, allow his 10-year-old to have a sex, a sexual relationship with a 30-year-old, you know, the law that is against that is against the religious beliefs of that man. He's religious beliefs, and there are religions who believe this. You can marry off your 10-year-old daughter to a 30-year-old guy. And if you, um, if you have laws against that, aren't you infringing upon his religious freedom? Big government is now telling this, this innocent, meek follower of God not to follow his conscience and to uh, push his 10-year-old daughter to marry a 30-year-old creep. Oh, yes. What a civilization that would be. Is that what you um, conservatives, freedom fighter, teabaggers want? Really? Great.